I guess I've never seen the like of this because it's a massive international effort. Many, many labs are trying to crack this one because it's so serious, because it is killing people, and that's the first tragedy. But secondly, the economic damage is massive. 66 trillion, they reckon, has been knocked off the world economy. Hi, I'm Luke O'Neill, I'm an immunologist, and here we are in my lab in the Trinity Biomedical Sciences Institute. In my lab, we work on a process called inflammation, which happens during an infection. It happens in all kinds of different diseases, and especially in COVID-19, inflammation damages the lungs, and we're very interested in studying that. About two years ago, we discovered a molecule called itaconate. It's a very interesting sort of molecule our bodies make to suppress inflammation. And of course, now we're exploring will it suppress inflammation in COVID-19. And in my lab, we test the immune system. We've got immune cells growing in the lab in various ways. And a big collaboration with labs in Holland and Belgium to test our idea. With COVID-19, it's all the more important that we share ideas, share approaches, share techniques in labs, just try to crack this big problem. So there's many different strategies, of course, to attack this virus head on. Uh, one is develop drugs to kill the virus. Uh, another is to suppress the inflammation that's so damaging. But of course, prevention is better than cure. And a vaccine is the big help that will prevent the disease. Massive progress there. There's eight vaccines in humans at the moment being tested. At least 100 are in, are in trials at various stages. Let's hope one of them works. We are a ways off. I'd say a vaccine is a year from now, maybe. Between now and then, though, we may get antivirals, we may get anti-inflammatories, but equally various things like washing your hands, of course, social distancing stops the virus spreading, and mask wearing is a key part of this now, because if you wear a mask, you won't infect someone else. And lots of science supports this. And many countries now are recommending we wear masks in crowded places like supermarkets and on public transport. Wearing masks will actually really help this because it will stop the virus being transmitted from one person to another. Well, the key number is this or not number that we all mentioned. That's how many people infect other people. So for example, if it's, let's say it's two, that means one person infects two, they go on and infect two more, it spreads like wildfire. Get it below one and you slow down the spread of this virus. So for example, if the number was 0.9, that means 10 people infect nine, nine might then infect eight and gradually it goes away. So again, that's preventing transmission and spread of the virus. So the great hope is that over the coming months, we'll see that or not number drop right down. And that means the virus isn't spreading anymore. In that situation, then the virus is almost gone from our community, so it might still be there but less and less people get infected. And that means those who have, have severe disease can be looked after there, hospitals aren't all around. That, that's what's gonna happen in the next few months. It's never before been such an effort to counter infectious disease. And all this collaboration, all these labs sharing information, companies, universities, all that will give rise to this virus being beaten in the end.